This is breaking news from News 8. In our Sunrise Smart Start, we begin with breaking news. Two more homes in the city of Rochester were struck by gunfire, sending one man to the hospital. Over the past four days, several homes have now been hit by bullets. Rochester police are calling this a dangerous trend. Ericetta Cost live at the Public Safety Building this morning with more on what's happening. Ericetta, good morning. Good morning, and some of those incidents involving children in the homes. We'll start with last night's incidents. Uh, just after midnight, police responded to Barnard Street for the report of gunfire into a home there, hitting and injuring a 42-year-old man. The man was transported to the hospital where he is expected to survive. Not even an hour later, police were called to Pierpont Street just before 1 a.m. for the report of more gunshots. They discovered another house struck by gunfire, but thankfully no occupants injured there. There are no suspects in custody for these incidents, and police say some are connected and some aren't. Either way, they're working to track down everyone responsible. Uh, we spoke with Lieutenant Greg Bello yesterday, who says they're working with City Hall and the Office of uh, Violence Prevention and community organizations as well to help people um, settle disputes and really bring an end to this violence. We'll be following these stories and be sure to update you live on here, live on News 8 and social media for those updates as we get them. In Rochester, Erica Cost, News 8. All right, Ericetta, thank you. Lieutenant Bello saying police are working with community organizations, including Pathways to Peace and Rise Up Rochester, to try to put an end to these disputes. Well, the U.S. taking more action against Russia amid what President Biden calls the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Joined by Washington correspondent Basil John, once again live in D.C. this morning. Basil, good morning. Uh, let's talk about these economic sanctions against Russia by the U.S. and other nations. Do we know what's been put in place? Well, Mark, Ali, good morning. And uh, yes, well, President Biden emphasized that the sanctions put in place by the U.S. and its allies will be worse than the ones from 2014. So uh, the first set of sanctions that were put into place uh, was that uh, there's now been sanctions put in place against two Russian banks. This way, uh, Russia is not able to uh, do business and uh, continue to build fortune from doing business with anything out in the West. Uh, the U.S. has also worked with Germany in order to shut off Nord Stream 2, which is that gas pipeline that leads from Russia into Germany. So already those economic hits will start impacting Russia. Well, there's a lot going on. Do President Biden and President Putin still plan to meet despite these sanctions? Well, we haven't gotten any word as to whether that uh, possible meeting between the two leaders is, is still going to happen, if it's still on the table. Now, President Biden did say yesterday that diplomacy is still an option and that the U.S. is open to talks with Russia to make sure that a war does not break out. But the, right now, we don't know if there are any plans set in stone uh, for Biden and Putin to meet. All right, Basil, thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, President Biden has also started moving some U.S. troops already based in Europe to Baltic states in an effort to support NATO allies that border Russia to the west. Following it closely, we'll continue mm -hmm. to do so. In the meantime, uh, going over to James Gilbert, who is doing the same with your forecast. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yes, uh, Mark and Allie. Uh, did you guys notice uh, the strong winds uh, around Ooh. the region this yes, morning? Yes, whipping around this morning, yes. Pushed my door, car door shut, yeah. Oh, did it? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather, I guess, have it pushed shut than sometimes when you open it uh, and then Flings it flies open. Yeah. open. Yes, uh, maybe a worse scenario there. But regardless, yes, hold on to your car door handles. Hold on to the steering wheels. You may feel the car moving uh, on the commute this morning. It is breezy. Uh, temperatures tumbling out of the 50s we were in this morning. A distant memory already. Uh, look at these wind gusts uh, over 30 miles per hour, I expect, through this afternoon. They do calm down as we get later in the day, but note the direction out of the northeast. Yes, snow coming uh, for the end of the week, that forecast uh, at the end of the show. Mark. All right, James, thank you. Time now to check the roads again with our sunrise traffic. Still looking at that accident in Rochester on Mount Reed Boulevard at Emerson Street. The main arteries, 390, 490, 590, up to speed at last check as you head out the door. 
Well, in other news, a 15-year-old is in the ICU after suffering serious injuries at Bristol Mountain. According to the Ontario County Sheriff's Office, the teen went over a ski jump and landed face first, causing him significant head and facial injuries. The teen was transported via Mercy Flight to Strong Memorial Hospital, where he is in guarded condition. We're told the teen was wearing a helmet at the time of the incident. Well, Great Lakes Gaming, Rochester's new home for eSports at Innovation Square in Rochester, is opening up a facility to house the growing video game community. The plan to create a perfect setting for leagues, tournaments, and events. Organizers of this new space say the goal will be to create a game space that attracts serious gamers with a luxury experience. So that's what we plan to do with the Gaming Lounge, offer an in-person aspect to those weekly tournaments that we do online. We actually run production and tournaments ourselves for eSports. Uh, we're actually running a broadcast tonight for a $2,500 tournament and we're streaming some of the top North American teams for Valorant. Teams like TSM, T1, uh, etc. It's a huge business. Great Lakes Gaming is aiming to open to the public coming up in April. Three more Buffalo area Starbucks locations could be officially unionizing today. The National Labor Relations Board will count votes from the Amherst, Cheektowaga, and Depew stores. However, Starbucks has filed an appeal of the board's decision to hold the elections. If the board doesn't rule on it by today, the ballots may be impounded and the count postponed. All they want is a voice on the job and a seat at the table. They want to be able to negotiate their pay with management and with this company who could not make the money it makes without them. Starbucks did not respond to a request for comment. In its appeal, company officials argued the union wants to organize all Buffalo Starbucks and is gaming the system by voting one store at a time. Lee Zeldin, the presumptive Republican nominee for governor of New York, is set to announce his pick for lieutenant governor later today. Zeldin has not yet indicated who the running mate might be, but in a statement did say, quote, uh, she will be breaking glass ceilings in this state. The announcement from Zeldin is expected later this morning at 11 o'clock in Manhattan. Governor Kathy Hochul announcing the Joint Security Operations Center in Brooklyn amid fears of cyber attacks. The governor saying New York State is an attractive target for cyber criminals since it's a leader in areas of finance, healthcare, energy, and transportation. This is going to be the nerve center for our cyber operations. We bring all the talent together, the resources, the data sharing that has been going on in silos for far too long. And it's so important. We realize now that when you see even a small attack in one system, that could be an indicator of more to come. Hochul has proposed $30 million, million dollars for a shared services program in addition to our proposed budget, which includes $62 million in cybersecurity protections. The governor also signing a bill to fast-track New York's marijuana industry. The new law, titled Conditional Cannabis Cultivation, will allow for equity, inclusion, and environmental sustainability by growers. Hemp farmers are now able to apply for a license, so when retail operations become available, there will be a product to sell. I think this will create generational wealth. I think this will create economic opportunity for neighborhoods that haven't seen this level of um, job creation before. Um, all, all things are positive. A rollout of the applications will begin sometime in March. In national news, a Georgia jury submitting a guilty verdict in the federal hate crime trial of the three men convicted of murdering Ahmaud Arbery. That panel says racism motivated three white men to chase down and kill the 25-year-old black man two years ago today. Defense attorneys for Travis and Gregory McMichael and William Bryan tried unsuccessfully to argue the men believed Arbery was involved in criminal activity. I cannot imagine the pain that a mother feels uh, to have her son run down and then gunned down uh, while taking a jog on a public street. The three men convicted in Arbery's death are already serving life sentences. Brian could potentially be granted parole in 30 years. The jury will begin deliberating in the federal trial of three former Minneapolis police officers killed are involved in the killing of George Floyd in 2020. Former officer Derek Chauvin already pleaded guilty after he was convicted in a state trial. 
Prosecutors say the officers did nothing when Floyd said he couldn't breathe as Chauvin restrained him. Defense attorneys say the officers were inexperienced and not properly trained. All right, let's find out what some folks will be talking about at the water cooler this morning. Have you been watching? It is down to the final three on Big Brother's Celebrity Edition. Singer-songwriter Tadra Call, UFC champion Misha Tate, and model Cynthia Bailey are all vying for the $250,000 cash prize. You can catch the finale coming up tonight at 8 o'clock on CBS. That could go for $250,000. <laughs> yes. <Ooh. laughs> Big Brother is always entertaining, but then you right. add that some celebrities in it as well. It makes it uh, that much better. Hijinks, James. Mm -hmm. Lots of hijinks. <laughs> right. Uh, What's going on in the forecast? Yeah. It, it, windy, uh, cold air coming in. You got a lot on your plate. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then that S word, snow, snow returning. Uh, for us, uh, snow accumulation on your screen now, six to eight inches. We're going for much of the region. This will certainly need to be tuned up as we get over the next couple of days and get a better idea of exactly how much and where. Uh, but higher numbers uh, closer to Lake Ontario because of lingering lake effects. I think difficult travel for your Friday. And if you're a skier, you're loving this. The snowpack just gets regenerated and we've got a powder day, I think, for both Saturday and Sunday. Um, so winter's back this week. It is. Download that News 8 app to stay updated too. Thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update in 30 minutes, CBS Mornings is coming up next. Have a great day.